guess what? Nepotism is only used as a bad word when it's black folks benefiting. Mm. Uh, when white people have nepotism, it's called legacy. It's called generational wealth. Yo, this is the inflection collective. All of us are connected, reflective, real life perspective, respected. The banter, the shit chat, no cap is big facts. So kick back. This year is done there, been there. No matter how how big you get, sometimes no matter what type of accolades you accolades you can have, you could be the biggest star on the face of the earth. And I believe Beyonce. It, Forget Taylor Swift. I think Beyonce is the biggest star on the face of the earth. That's just my personal opinion. No matter how many Grammys she's won, it's still not enough in some people. Now, Beyonce didn't say anything, but I wonder, I know you've heard what Jay-Z, who was receiving an Icon Award at the Grammys, what he said in his speech about Beyonce not receiving record of the year. And here's what he said. We want y'all to get it right, at least get it close to right. I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone and never won album of the year. So even by your own metrics, that doesn't work. I mean, yeah, Jay-Z was throwing a little shade. Some people don't belong in the category. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you would think that Beyonce, who's had 32 Grammys most of all time, and she's never won record of the year. Ironically, album. he said that album, album of the album, year. Album of the year. Yeah. Let me get that right. They even made a joke about that during the Grammys. Album of the year that she's never gotten it. And ironically, on the same night that Taylor Swift broke a, a record, for winning her fourth Grammy for album of the year. What, what did you think of that whole assessment? You know what I think is unfortunate, and I think we see it primarily in, in spaces of women, is this comparison, this tit for tat. Now, I will say, if Beyonce is the most uh, Grammy award winning artist of all time, the Grammys, the album of the year is the big one because all the other awards and that you are nominated for are more than likely works from that album. So if yeah. she's been awarded and that's what Jay-Z's point was by your own metrics. If you've given her the most Grammys for projects on her albums, but you've never given her album of the year, these are parts of the album and she's won all these Grammys for the parts of the album, but not album of the year. That's kind of weird. Um, yeah. You know, most artists will say, I don't do it for the awards. I don't do it for the accolades. Of course, that's probably true. But you do want to be honored and respected by your peers and in your industry. I think Jay-Z, sometimes, mm. I feel, sometimes Jay-Z plays both sides, right? Because Jay-Z is one of the wealthiest people. Mm -hmm. He does have power and influence. And sometimes when you see someone stand on the stage when they are accepting an award from the body that they are criticizing, it's like... There probably could have been some things discussed or handled outside. I also feel like he kind of has the same situation with the NFL and his association with the NFL when he came on board after the whole uh, taking a knee uh, fiasco with Colin Kaepernick. So what I'm saying is sometimes you can use your platform to bring attention to something, but then also what are you doing outside of that moment when you are also accepting an award from who you're chastising and criticizing? Yeah, I mean, and, and it, the Icon Award is, is over there. He deserves that, obviously. I, I always look at the Grammys. I look at the Oscars. We, we're always going to find something wrong sometimes. But you know what? We Why does that award mean so much? And I know it, why it means so much, because you can say you're a Grammy winner. You can say you're an Academy Award winner. You can say you're a Tony winner and whatnot. Uh, sometimes I think it's Black people, though. I think we put so much emphasis on those awards, but the people that help get you there, and I'm not talking about Jay-Z or just Beyonce, anybody else. I'm talking about as a whole, we put so much emphasis on those awards, even as fans, even as viewers or whatever, but we don't support the award shows that actually help those people grow into that crossover mainstream. Like BET Awards used to be huge. Nobody knows who's going to win the BET Award this year. Nobody, can you tell me who won the album of the year, the BET Awards? Probably not. Can you tell me who won the uh, the for the NAACP, the Image Award? Probably not. You can't do those types of things because they're not as important. Now, I can say the same thing about the MTV Awards, which used to be so huge or whatever. Nobody really cares about those anymore. It's about the Grammys and about the Academy Awards. Now, what I will say is that Jay-Z, I believe, you know, and I'm not privy to this, so I'm, I'm not you know, trying to, I'm just, just my opinion. Maybe there was an internal discussion that was happening <laughs> inside the house. And sometimes when your wife, who has this great image, and she's not going to come out and say this publicly because she's too classy, but I think maybe she feels a little slighted too. I mean, I think there is a part of her who puts in all this work as Beyonce, as Sasha Fierce, who has these dynamic concerts, who is just well-loved and renowned across the world, great out, put out great albums. I think it's a shame that she's never won album of the year now it could have been because that particular year she had a great album but somebody was just better just like we've seen it took so long you can look at denzel's career maybe he should have more academy awards he should have won for uh hurricane he should have won for malcolm x 
maybe that year the, the academy just said, hey, somebody was better this year, even though you had you've had an outstanding career. So um, it's interesting that you can win that many Grammys and never win album of the year, like you said, because the compilation of your entire work. But at the same time, I think it's also a, a shame that she hasn't. Uh, and I don't know how we go about fixing it or. Why well, I don't. So I think important. the way we go about fixing it is again most of our conversations, and I don't know if it's because we are uh, black people in America, but you know, there's still this this thing that you don't want to be seeking validation from others, right? And so the awards that were not created for us, the awards that we used to could not be nominated for, the awards that we were never invited to, you know, once that started happening, where people, oh, the first black this, the first rap album this, it's like, oh. They're acknowledging us. They're validating us. I think it's unfortunate that there is so much division and people always say people bring race into it. We were born into the construct of race and the division of race. And so uh, in every facet of life, we still have so many black first. But then when we have the black first, you have to say, but why did I need that validation from them? That's great yeah, that I, I broke I, down I, that I glass ceiling. Do. That's great that I'm pioneering. But also, why do I need them to clap for me? Yeah, I mean, well, well, I think because that's the, I think that's the biggest, and I understand exactly, and I feel the same way. Uh, Grammys are obviously the biggest award that you can win in music. That is recognized as the biggest award that you can win in music. Like one day, hopefully, you you receive a Mark Twain award at, for your comedy or whatnot. If you, you know, you continue that, that's the biggest award. Everybody wants to win that accolade. And album of the year is one of those things right now. But once again, it's like the the recognition. We know who Beyonce is. We know how great she is. Whatever. Uh, it shouldn't be as important. But once again, I think that was internal conversations between her, Beyonce, other people. Kanye did the same thing, ironically, to Taylor Swift and made Taylor Swift famous in a, in, in, in a sense to us because I had never heard of Taylor Swift before that Kanye moment or whatnot. That's, that was so long ago. I can't believe I'm saying that, but that's exactly what happened. So he didn't say anything that Kanye hadn't been saying for years or whatever. He just said it publicly on the award stage of the same awards that he award show that he was getting an award for. And I think it, right. it came I, out I think of, it's obviously a conversation that we could all have at nauseum. But at the end of the day, you know, Beyonce is going to be Beyonce. She works harder than everybody else. She she puts the time in. You know, that's the one thing I will say about Beyonce. For, I, I think it's unfortunate when Beyonce comes up, it, the the inverse or what people think mm -hmm. is the opposite of it. Beyonce is Taylor Swift because we always kind of pit women against each other. If it's Nicki Minaj and it's Meg, Meg Stallion, you know, it's like it's never just let a woman be great and, and we don't have to compare her to another woman and judge her greatness. Um, but it's one of those things where, I'm sure they've had conversations about it, but again, by their own metrics. Okay. If this is how this award system works, this doesn't make sense that she hasn't won this award. I'm not saying they're like, Oh, like me, you like me. It's just like, Hey, the math ain't math. And on this, I also think it's interesting. And when you do talk about Taylor Swift, and I already know that my producers are going to make this the clip of the day. So I have to make sure I say it right. <laughs> but it's one of those things where you can't name a Taylor Swift song. And we think back to when we were growing up and we didn't have our own music channels, our own music resources. We knew everyone's music. We knew Duran Duran. We knew Wham. We knew Rick Springfield. We knew Bruce Springsteen. You know, we we had a more, I think, in our generation, a more inclusive music experience. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, Prince, Madonna. We knew all the songs. And then even if you think back, like we knew Pink songs. We knew Avril Lavigne songs. We knew um, Fergie, you know, and so for whatever reason, however, she's become the most popular and most billionaires type woman on the planet. With Taylor Swift, she does not have the crossover appeal uh, that Beyonce does have. And so that's what's interesting is if you just look at business, Taylor Swift doesn't have that crossover that we've seen uh, white women have in our communities. Madonna, you know how many Madonna songs, you know? And so it's that thing of like, for whatever reason, we're not, we don't, we're not, we don't know what the hype is for her, uh -huh. but she's the most but popular woman on the planet. I think I think I think you twofold. I think that she does have a huge following from uh, some black people out there. Maybe not us, maybe not the type of music we listen to. And I, I agree. Beyonce has been able to cross over and is beloved and loved more so by white uh, by white women than Taylor Swift is beloved by black women. But you can say the same thing like Britney Spears, Britney Spears. I was surprised. How many we knew black Britney people Spears music? Right, <laughs> we knew her song. Britney Spears. I've seen more black people come out and defend Britney Spears, and I've seen white people come out and defend Britney Spears when it came to the whole Justin Timberlake situation or when she was going through 
her situation with her her, her, her dad. Uh, so that that's pretty interesting. But there. I think that's but, interesting, though, right? Because we can we know it's not uh, to me it's not a race thing. It's a music thing, right? We like yep. good music. And well, so whatever we, touches I don't you. think our communities, we've never discriminated against people who put out good music, whether it was Eminem, whether, you know what I'm saying? Like, as far as crossover, we invite people mm-hmm. to the cookout. We're like, oh, this is a bop. You know, uh, Gwen Stefani, uh, you know, all the, the white women that I know, I know their songs and I can jam to. My nieces are Swifties. My, I guess maybe my sister who takes them to the concert, she's probably a Swiftie too, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but So I'm not saying she doesn't have black fans. I'm saying the actual crossover appeal of everyone knows these artists' songs. Everybody knew Michael Jackson. Everybody knew Prince. Everybody knew Madonna. Everybody knew. And music is different and how we consume music is different. It's very segmented now. But I just think it's interesting how, you know, if, if I had to, I might be able to name, I probably could say Shake It Off. That would be the one Taylor Swift song I could say. Uh yeah, I, I I have no idea what you're talking about when it comes. To, I'm serious. <laughs> I think if you if you hum the song, maybe I know it. Seriously, I just I'm just I'm, I'm not I'm, gonna I'm know not it a, if you hum it, but I know there's a I song am not called a huge, but but for me, I'm not even really a, a huge music fan. Period. If right. I like music, I hear it. I hear, but I'm not going deep and saying I know. Oh, this is track number four on her album, her third album that came out. Well, in I can't do that for anybody. I can't do that for I, anybody. I, now. I'm not that, but yeah. some people can. The the one yeah. thing that really us. Uh, stood out to me during Jay-Z's speech wasn't what people were talking about. And I think his message at the end, this is where we talk about done there, been that, where it, it resonated with me was when he said, you got to keep showing up. So no matter what, no, you got to keep showing up until they give you the accolades, until they give you, uh, what do you say? You, the, the accolades that you deserve until they call you chairman, uh, until they call you a genius, until they call you the greatest of all time. So you just got to continue to show up no matter what, keep on putting in that work. I think that message got lost because of everything else he said, you know, calling out the Grammys, basically even saying something about boycotting when he was up for, you know, some certain Grammys or whatever, and even throwing shade at other artists who shouldn't be in certain categories. The last part of what he said to me resonated and was the most important message that no matter what people have done to you or not given to you uh, that you feel like you deserve every single day, you keep showing up because like you mentioned, I don't know uh, if you're an artist if you're in it just to receive awards or recognition from people that ne- don't necessarily want to give it to you, you're going to have a long career that is going to be so super frustrating. I mean, I've been up for Emmys and, and you know, all that type of stuff like that lost way more Emmys than I want to want to, but I've lost way more Emmys than I've ever won, but I'm not in it just for that. I'm in it for the satisfaction of my art of, of me going and doing something I enjoy doing of me uh, looking at myself in the mirror and knowing that I gave myself and gave the the people that are listening or watching me everything that I had on that particular day. That is what I do it for. So if I can get up and I have that type of mindset where I can look myself in the mirror and know that, hey, you're up, I'm going to show up no matter what you give me. And eventually, because you're giving me fuel, because you didn't give me what I thought I deserved or wanted, I should say, then I'm going to work even harder until all those things come uh, my way and if they never come, that's fine. But at least I'm giving a thousand percent of everything I do. All right. I think I think the healthiest way to pursue your dreams, pursue your art, pursue your craft is for your passion for it. I think anytime mm-hmm. you're doing something for someone else to acknowledge it or support it or congratulate or award it, you're going to always be coming up short, especially in show business, right? You, you, you might not get invited or you get invited. You're not invited to the after party. You nominate it. You don't win. You don't get nominated. It's picked up. It doesn't, you know, it's always another benchmark where you might feel like if you're chasing that, you might feel like the finish line keeps being moved versus, Hey, I'm proud and excited of this thing I've worked on. I sleep good at night and who, mm-hmm. who is for it to reach. Um, and that's how I pursue comedy. That's how I pursue just being a human. It ain't for everybody. I know I'm not for right. everybody, but for the people I am for, I, I know that, you know, I'll keep going for them. And then if someone else uh, acknowledges it or is surprised or supports it, it's like, Hey, welcome to the party. But you know, it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same show, whether you watch it or not. Absolutely. And, and, and like I said, I'm, I'm getting into stand up not for the, the applause. As a matter of fact, one of the best pieces of advice I got was from a comedian that said, hey, don't listen for the applause. Don't listen for the laughter or whatnot, because all your jokes aren't going to hit. And if you listen for the laughter and you don't get that laughter, it's going to throw you off. That advice has come in handy a lot so far. I just <laughs> <will admit. laughs> well, that, let me let me put the second part of the advice okay. on. Maybe you didn't hear the second part, but you are up there to make them laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I'm up there to make them laugh, and, and you know, I, you know, a lot of my jokes hit or whatnot. Don't get me wrong, I know what I'm up there for, but at the same time, right now, 
my comedy is therapy because I'm not talking about things that are exaggerated. I'm talking about a little exaggeration, but I'm talking about, you know, things that are actually happening to me in my life. And so, like I said, it's, it's very therapeutic for me and uh, I'm enjoying that. 